Hi guys, I'm Carlo from Carlos Ceramics and welcome back to another instruction video. In today's video I'm going to show you how to make wall faces. So I will first show you how to throw faces on the wheel and then later on I will be turning them into wall faces. So if you're ready, I'm ready. So without any further ado, let's head over to the wheel and get started. I start off with throwing a face. There's one thing about this face that's a little bit different than a normal face, but I'll just explain everything. I start off with centering the clay. I do this by first pressing it towards the middle as much as I can, and then I fully center it by coning it up and pressing it down. You can repeat multiple times until the clay is fully centered. Then when the clay is centered, I press it down a little bit, and then I start opening up the shape. I hold my left hand around the clay to keep it in the middle and I press the middle finger of my right hand into the clay and then pull the clay towards myself. And when I'm doing this I'm doing it a bit different than normally because I will be trimming the bottom round so I made the clay in the middle a little bit deeper than the clay on the sides because I will be trimming away a bit more clay from the sides so that I can make the bottom round since it will be a wall vase. And then I start pulling up the walls. I hold the sponge in my right hand and I press towards my left hand on the inside while making an upwards movement. I repeat this multiple times so that the clay becomes higher and the wall become thinner. I start off with making a cylinder and try to move my hands in a straight line but sometimes the clay becomes a little bit too wide then I hold both of my hands around it and press the clay back into the middle and then I just pull it up an extra time. As you can see I also like to hold the thumb of my left hand on top of my right hand this way it's easy for me to move both of my hands at the same time. And just like that I go over it a few times to make the clay nice and thin and to get the height that I want. And then I start defining the shape a little bit more. You can make these wall faces in any shape you'd like, but I'm going for a pretty basic face shape this time. So I decided to give it a little bit of a thinner neck, so I press the clay at the top inwards a bit by just holding my hands around it and then moving them inwards. And I decided to make the belly or like the side a little bit wider, so I pressed from the inside outwards with my left hand towards my right hand on the outside and I just held sponge there to make sure that the clay didn't stick to my fingers. And just like that I change the shape slowly and just like I said you can make this in any form you'd like. I would recommend to not make the opening too small because we will be cutting it in half. So the opening will become smaller since it's going to be a wall face. So you might like to make it a bit wider than you normally do if you still want to be able to put a good amount of flowers into it. And just like this I slowly define the shape. I saw that my rim was a little bit wobbly so I took my needle tool and I slowly pressed it into the clay to cut off a little bit of clay from the top to make it nice and straight again. And then I went over it with my fingers to smooth it out and make it nice and round. And then the shape was finished and I went over it with the sponge to get rid of any water or slip that was still on the piece. And I also got rid of the water and slip on the inside by going over it with a sponge that's attached to a stick. And then I took a wooden knife to cut away a little bit of excess clay at the bottom. As I said I made this quite thick because I'm going to trim it round. So you can cut away quite some clay here already. This will just save some time when trimming it. And I also cleaned my bed with this wooden knife. And then the throwing part is done and this piece is ready to dry before it's leather hard, which for me takes a day. And then after it has dried and it's leather hard, I start trimming it. I place it upside down on top of my giving grip and I start trimming it. I first make sure that the piece is centered because sometimes it's a little bit uneven at the bottom from cutting it off the bed. So I first go over it a few times and then I start cutting away more and more clay from the side. And I try to make it into one fluent and round shape, just like this. If you want you can of course make the bottom flat as well, but since it's a wall face I think it's quite nice to have the bottom round. Because I just like the look of that, but if you'd prefer a flat bottom just like a normal face you can of course just do that and keep it a little bit more simple. And just like this I go over it with a trimming tool from the top to the bottom and from the bottom to the top. And I just keep cutting away a little bit more clay and keep making it more and more round. When I'm happy with the shape I smooth it out. I do this by first going over it with a wet sponge. And then I get rid of the slip that was created by the sponge by going over it with this trimming tool. This helps me to smooth it out. And then I go over it with my fingers an extra time to smooth it out even more. I often have a line in between the part that I trim and that I didn't trim. And to get rid of this I put these smaller arms onto the given grip so that I can trim a little bit lower. And then I went over the side again with the trimming tool and just cut away a little bit of clay. To make it into one fluent shape and get rid of any lines. And then I just smoothed it out in the same way as I did with the bottom. And then it's time to make this face into a wall face. So for this I first placed it on top of this piece of knitted fabric. This is just an easy way to hold it. You can of course also ask someone else to hold it. But this is just an easy way to hold it for yourself. I take my wire tool and try to cut it in half. I found out that it was a bit too hard because the rim was already quite dry. So I took a wet sponge and just wetted the rim a little bit. Doesn't have to be that much, just a little bit already makes the clay a bit softer. And that way I was able to cut through the rim and cut the whole face in half. You can decide yourself where you want to cut it. I decided to cut it a little bit more towards one side because I'm only going to turn this into one wall face. 
but if you'd like you can also cut it perfectly in the middle and then turn one throne face into two wall faces but i like it to be a little bit more round so to have a little bit more clay than just the half of the face and for the last part i like to take the face in one hand and then it's easier to pull it towards the side and cut it and then the face is cut in half and then it's quite nice to see how thin you've thrown. This can be quite interesting when you're learning to throw thinner. As you can see my bottom became very thin when trimming it so I might have trimmed it a little bit too much. But that's fine, it will be alright. Then I placed it on top of my table to see if it was nice and flat. And I saw that the bottom was sticking out a little bit. So I took this little knife and cut away a bit more clay from the bottom to make it flat. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat but it's just as flat as you can get it. If you were wondering why I placed the face straight up and not upside down when cutting it, here is an example where I tried to cut it upside down. Um, yes, didn't really work out. <laughs> so, and then, and then we go on with the wall face. Um, to be able to attach to the wall and still be able to put some flowers in it, we have to make a back for the vase. So for this I first roll out some clay and I roll it out quite thin. You can of course roll it out as thin as you'd like, but I make it about half a centimeter I think, 5 or 6 millimeters. And then I place my vase on top of it and then I take the little knife again and I mark where I need to cut the clay. And then I take away the vase and I cut the clay into the shape that I just marked. And for the top here you can decide yourself what shape you'd like to give it. If you want, you can make this top part here into a circle that's like sticking out above the face. And then you can make a hole in this to hang it. I'm not a big fan of this, but if you like, you can do this. So I thought I'd show you. But I prefer to just make it into a straight line that's equal to the rim of the face. So I just take a ruler and then cut it straight off. And then I get rid of the excess clay that we don't need. But you can of course still use this for another face or something else. And then before attaching the two parts together, I like to blow dry this piece a little bit because it's quite wet and the face is already leather hard. So by drying this with a heat gun, I make the difference in between dryness a little bit smaller. And that way you can prevent the pieces from cracking. So I just blow dry it on both sides. You can keep it a little bit softer than the face. That might make it a bit easier to attach the two parts together. But you don't want it to be too soft, otherwise it will crack. And to attach the two pieces together, I take the scratching tool from Xeem Tools and I scratch all of the sides that will be attached to the vase. So I'm not doing the rim, just the sides here. And then I take a brush with some vinegar and I apply this everywhere as well. Vinegar helps the clay to stick and bond, so I would really recommend to use that. Otherwise you can also use slip. And then I scratch it again with the same tool as before. And then I take the face and I put this on top of the slab of clay and I make sure that it aligns on every side and then I put some pressure on it to make sure it gets stuck and then I start smoothing out the sides. To do this I like to use this shaper tool which works quite nice and just like this I press the clay on the bottom onto the face. You can also just do this with your finger but with this tool it's easier to see what you're doing and it's also easier to put a little bit more pressure on it. And then I cut away a little bit more excess clay at the rim here and I also smoothed this out just like the rest. And then I smoothed the sides out even more by going over it with a sponge. Sometimes it's already enough to just go over it with a sponge but I saw that there was still a little bit of excess clay sticking out. And I like it to be one fluent shape. So I took this shredder from Mid Tools and I went over the sides to cut away a bit more clay. It does make some lines of texture so I went over it with sponge again to smooth it out. And I also went over the rim here with sponge to just smooth it out and make it nice and round. And then the last part that we have to smooth out is the inside. It's quite hard to see but I'm just going over the parts where I attached it together with the vinegar brush to just smooth it out and make sure it's all attached. And then the last thing that I do is make a hole in the back. I do this with the hole maker. I first place it on top of the piece to see where I want to make the hole. And then I slowly press it inwards and make a hole like that. And then I like to go over the rims of the hole with a wet sponge to just smooth it out and make sure there are no sharp edges. And then the piece is finished and ready to dry before biscuit fire. After it has been biscuit fired I start glazing it and I actually made two wall vases. And I will show you how I glaze both of them. I started with three coats all over the inside and the outside with the glaze eggplant from Mako. I'm not glazing the back of the vase because I will be placing it on top of that into the kiln. And you don't want the glaze to melt onto your kiln shelf. So three coats of eggplant from Mako all over the piece on both of the vases. And it's important to let the glaze dry in between coats. And the second glaze that I'm going to use on one of the vases is Lavender Mist also from Mako. And I'm applying this only on the outside. If you want you can also put it on the inside but you don't really see it. So I just put it on the outside and I keep a little rim unglazed with this glaze on the sides. Because I wasn't sure if it was going to run in the kiln. And with this glaze I glazed the whole outside for two coats. And then I applied a third coat only on the top part. Just to add a little bit more color here and also because I wasn't sure if it was going to run if I would glaze the whole piece with three coats. 
And then this one is finished and I move over to the next one. For the next one, the second glaze that I'm going to use is Norse Blue, which I apply the same way as I did with the previous glaze. So this one also already has three coats of eggplant and I'm applying two coats of Norse Blue all over the outside except for a little rim. And then I also apply a third coat only on the top part. When glazing I often get a little bit of glaze on the bottom, I just get rid of this by twisting or rubbing it on top of this wet piece of fabric. That way I make sure that the whole bottom is clean and no glaze will get stuck to my kiln shelf. And then the pieces are finished and ready to go into the kiln for a glaze fire. And here are some pictures of the final result. That was it for this video, thank you very much for watching, I hope you liked and learned something new from it. If so, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. And if you're going to make these wall faces yourself and you're going to post them on Instagram, please tag me at Carlos because I would love to see them. I hope to see you next week. Bye!